Hello, 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 cheers, Kevin here, and welcome back to another KOS video, and uh, today is going to be a little bit different from the rest of this series. We're taking sort of a, a little intermission. The reason for that is my family and I are moving into our first home. That's taken more than the few hours I really had budgeted for getting us moved over, so... Uh, well, some other things have uh, had to go by the wayside temporarily. Uh, we didn't have a video last week, and uh, today's is going to be a little short. In fact, we're going to answer just one question, because I want to cover this before we move forward, because I think that it's important. It's, it's a goal for me that this series should be accessible and helpful for people who are new to KOS, and we're going to tackle uh, probably the most common confusion um, or issue that I've seen people struggling with. It's been asked um, in the comments. I've seen it asked on the subreddit. So let's talk about it. What is the difference between local, global, ver set, and parameter? What are all of these things? So in our code, we have variables where we give an, an identifier. We say, I'm going to have, I have some data. You know, maybe I have a number. Um, but I want to save it in something where I so some identifier so I can refer to it later. And so we say declare identifier to expression or declare identifier is expression or declare. There are all these different ways of saying the exact same thing. All of these are legal declare statements. They are have identical meaning to each other. These have identical meaning to each other. Don't worry about reading this too much because we're going to go over <laughs> a, a, an example in the in in our own code. But the point that I wanted to, to make here really quick is part of the confusion with local variables, global variables, this declare keyword, and what all of this means and why you use one over the other is that these six versions of code are identical and these four versions of code are identical. This has to do with backwards compatibility and associated reasons, but that's part of where the confusion lies. So without further ado, let's jump over into the code and let's talk about what local variables are, what global variables are, and where parameter and set kind of come into play here. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to apologize because I introduce something that was a little bit confusing. We've used a couple of examples of code where I've said local, you know, say x is 5. Um, and I may say set x to 6. And uh, I've, I've used, this is the one that's confusing that I've done. I said declare global x to 4. Now, this is confusing syntax. So, uh, and, and let's actually pull up the example where we wrote that. Um, we had that in, yeah, if not defined old thrust, then declare global old thrust to ship available thrust. Here's part of why this is confusing. This declare keyword, and I can say this definitively, it is always redundant now. Didn't used to be in old versions of KOS, but now you can always remove the declare keyword and it will mean the exact same thing. Also, you can use global blah to this, or you can also say is this. And because I used that old syntax, I don't know why. Um, I think I introduced some additional confusion. So when we initially started using global variables, we could just say global variable name is, and then whatever the value is that we want it to be. So that's real quick in our existing code where maybe I contributed to some of the confusion there. Okay, so let's talk about what these variables, uh, what these keywords actually mean. So what is the difference between, we, we've talked about declare, I want to talk about local and global real quick. And we'll get to set and parameter uh, later on because those kind of build off of these two concepts. So if I have some code, I may say I have a function uh, that I'm going to name foo, and inside here I have some condition, I'm going to say if is awesome, and then I have something in here, I'll say if is super cool. And then I'm going to do something, print five, right? Okay. So we have some example code somewhere, and there are a bunch of these curly braces. And let's say, instead of saying five, I want to say print X, and so I need to set X somewhere. I'm going to say local X is five. Now, as we discussed, I could also say local X to five, or I could also say declare local X. We're going to use just this, local X is five. So local thing is value. So what does this mean? This means that the X that I'm creating right now exists only within the context of these curly braces. So when I print X, it'll print 5, and that's just fine. But if I tried to print X out here, we're going to have a problem because it doesn't exist out there. Whenever we get done running this code, all the variables inside here, all of the local variables, get 
garbage collected. They get thrown away. So we can't actually access stuff outside here. That's what it means to have a local variable. Now, if I did say local x is 7 up here and got rid of this line, well, now if I print x, it's going to say 7. Because when we try and find variables inside these scopes, it's going to go, I have no idea what that is. I'm going to jump up to this next set of curly braces looking for an x. And it goes, oh, well, this one has a local x. But, of course, it's still gated within these curly braces. Every curly brace is like a little privacy gate. And you can build privacy gates inside privacy gates inside privacy, privacy gates. You're not going to bleed these variables outward, but anything inside your little area can, can access it. So I can get access to this X because I'm inside this is awesome brace. But if I put this X inside here, then I can't access it out there. And if I try and print X here, this is now going to cause a problem. One other thing that's useful about local, though, is that I could say local x inside here is 5, and then I could print x here as well. What I'm doing here now is I'm saying, okay, this is awesome curly brace set has a local x, and I'm setting it to 7. Then we jump into this thing, and we say, all right, I'm going to create another x, but this is not the same x. This is a private x that's only in here, and I'm not going to modify this external one. So the useful thing here is that I don't have to worry, hey, maybe somebody else already used this variable name, because I'm saying local. I'm saying, hey, just create this little variable inside my private space, set it to something, and let me use it. And then if it, it just so happens that somebody else happens to be using that variable name, which we are up in this larger, this higher scope, well, that's just fine. It'll go ahead and leave it alone. If we print this out, it's going to still say 7. And when we print this out, it's going to say 5. Because even though we're using the same letter to refer to these variables, they're actually different variables. They exist. This one exists only within this scope. And this one exists inside the outer scope. So that's what local does. Global is, uh, if, if, if local is a, something fancy, global is kind of a, 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 just a big mallet. If I say global x is 5, then it is going to just create something at what's called the global scope. Now that means that it doesn't matter where I go looking for it, I'm going to be able to find it. If I go ahead and print X outside here, it, that's just fine. It's going to be able to find it. If I go ahead and print X out here, it's going to be able to find it just fine. We're creating this universal variable that anybody can have access to. And this can be helpful sometimes if you do want variables that are going to outlive um, the garbage collection of these scopes. So when we return from our function well, then the variables inside here are going to get cleaned up. So if I had something that was, you know, counter, um, you know, is counter plus one. And let's assume that I just wanted to return that counter. So every time you call foo, you get a different counter. And, of course, we would have to initialize this to some original value or whatever. But if we want to count it up, problem is we'll go ahead, we'll run through this code, it'll, it'll execute, and it'll return this counter, and then... This will get deleted, that, var that variable will get garbage collected and won't exist outside of the function. Because as soon as we leave these curly braces, all of the private variables go away because they're not needed anymore. And as soon as you call the function again, it'll create a new one. So in that case, we might want to say global counter is counter plus one. And of course, in, in, in our actual code examples, we've also said if not defined counter you know, set uh, the global counter is zero or something like that. That's a case where you might want a global variable. But generally speaking, you're going to want locals. Um, globals are really kind of a way to say, hey, this thing needs to be accessible um, outside or across a bunch of different uh, executions of a function. That's when you're generally going to use it. So the idea generally is that local is going to exist inside these scopes only. And any child scopes can get access to those variables, but they can also write variables with the same name and not have to worry about overwriting them, and that's useful. Okay, so that's global and local. So what does set do? So I'm going to change this to set x to 5. And we got to talk through what this is going to do. So the first thing that set x is going to do is it's going to look and say, hey, inside the scope, is there a local variable called x? And if so, I'm going to set its value to 5. So if I were to do this... Uh, local x is 
one. Well, it's going to go ahead, find that X, it's going to change the value to five. And so if I print X in here, it's going to give me five. If I try and print X out here, well, we know what's going to happen. Problem. We're going to get an error message because there is no X outside of this little scope because that's a local variable. But here's where set is a little bit interesting. If I didn't have a local X in there, uh, actually, let me just clip that. And that local X existed out here. Ugh, indentation. Thank you. What set is actually going to do is it's going to walk up this, this series of privacy gates and try and find an X and then change its value. So then this all of a sudden is going to be fine. It's going to go ahead and, and print five. But if we try to print it out here, nope. So what, it, what set is doing is it's walking up these trees and looking for the nearest, uh, the nearest X. And that's useful because sometimes we have these if, if conditions that need to refer to these parent variables. And, that, and then we can modify them and everything is just great. But if it doesn't find one, let's imagine that this doesn't exist at all. Well, then what set does is it ends up creating a global variable. So let's say global X is five, that these are equivalent in this case because there is no local private variable called X. So in fact here, now this is going to work because everybody has access to this X variable because we've now set it as a global. We could even print it out here and we get five. So that's what set is going to do. Okay, so the last thing to talk about real quick is what parameter does. So we have some examples where we say parameter x. I'm going to say parameter x there. What this is saying is that, hey, there's this function foo, and foo expects that when I call it, I'm going to pass in a value. And when I do that, it is going to take that value and create a local variable and assign that value to it. So this is what this effectively does, although this could be whatever we happen to pass in. So if we passed in a different value, well, you know, then it's going to pass, you know, it's going to assign X to seven, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a way that you can go ahead and just initialize a whole bunch of variables when you call these functions so that the functions can do different things based on what you pass into them. So that is the kind of quick and dirty summary of global, local, set, and parameter. Of course, this is another case where you could say declare parameter because there are multiple ways in this language to specify things. And by the way, this isn't something specific just to KOS. This is usually something that is confusing in a lot of different programming languages, and there may be multiple ways to do something, which makes things a little bit more confusing. In any case, when you're looking at code examples and you see declare, you can safely remove it as long as you're running under a fairly current version of KOS, and everything will operate exactly the same way. Now, there is one tiny thing that we haven't talked about, and that is the lazy global directive. This does prevent the set command from creating global variables if it doesn't find uh, an X defined in some, in some area. I'm not going to cover that because I think it's confusing and I think it's not worth uh, necessarily spending a lot of time on. I don't think you need to really worry about it. If you're interested, you can go ahead and take a look at the docs and read in for yourself. But that's going to do it for me. Uh, when we get back, we will uh, start working on getting our maneuver script uh, a little more optimized. We'll start looking at some of the math and physics and making things a little bit better. But I wanted to make sure to stop and really explain what local, global, set, and parameter do. And uh, yeah, also just making sure that we will try to use very consistent syntax going forward just to make sure that we don't confuse... Heck, that's, that's a good example. We're going to say global blah is something instead of two, although they all work. It's going to be easier to understand if we try and retain some consistency, and so I'm going to try and do better about that in the future. But I uh, think we're about halfway through um, our introductory series. I'm looking forward to getting back to it, but uh, yeah, that's going to have to, uh, you know, take take a little bit of a backseat to getting over into the new house and getting everything set up. So I hope to see you then. And happy flying and coding and all of those things. Cheers.